Hello, welcome back to the Interface. My name's Alex, and today we're going to look at the infotainment system on the new 2025 Suzuki Swift Hybrid. Now, this car was refreshed in 2024, and it comes with a brand new infotainment screen, which is nine inches in size. It does, thankfully, have support for wireless Apple CarPlay, which is a really good thing. So, just to sort of go over what this screen has, um, it does have a built-in satellite navigation system. It does have wireless Apple CarPlay. But as we'll get to in a minute, a lot of the software speed and sort of the overall um, usability of it is a little bit slow. Um, using Apple CarPlay is thankfully fine with no real issues, but the speed of the software is a little bit slow in certain areas, which we'll look at. Um, so yeah, nine inch infotainment screen, pretty, pretty good, really good brightness, good resolution. Um, everything looks pretty good quality. And we have got some touch capacitive buttons on the bottom. So you've got the mute button here, volume down, volume up, uh, the home button, favorite star, uh, phone, and then power off for the screen. So this is the home screen, um, and there's various things you can get to on here. So on the left-hand screen, so on the left-hand side is the satellite navigation system. Got some shortcuts for those various bits there. Got settings and Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Uh, fuel economy is displayed here. Got time and date, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So I've got my phone connected currently for wireless Apple CarPlay, and it's showing you got I've got that connected basically. And then they've got the media on the right hand side. At the moment I've got a podcast from Apple CarPlay playing, but there are some buttons there to get to the radio. So let's look at this sat nav, built in sat nav first. It is a, again, it is a little bit slow. So, well, actually that's not too bad. Um, the, the zooming bits on the screen is okay and sort of panning. Um, if we click on the screen, we've got various bits there. So let's have a quick look. So it tells you where you are. As you can say, go there. Um, we've got the uh, zooming ability here, which is quite good. So if we zoom out completely, we've got the whole of the UK. Uh, replace home, search points of interest, and add this location. So we say search points of interest. So it's searching now, and let's have a look for a bookshop. And it should tell us where the near, nearest bookshop is, which is apparently Tewkesbury. Cool. Um, that's, yeah, that's, I guess that's useful. Uh, we go back to the main screen here. Um, again, we can pan around the whole of, the, whole of Europe there. Um, and if we click on that one, it should tell us what the traffic is doing or TM, TMC messages. Yeah, it's it's fine. Um, if we say go there, um, let's let's drag that to there and say go there. It's going to calculate the route for us. Uh, it's a 200 miles, three and a half hours, somewhere in Yorkshire, I think that is. Um, and yeah, the only little thing is when you try and end a particular route, it is a little bit confusing to do it. So if we say start guidance, it will speak to us and guide us there. But but stopping this route is a little bit confusing. So if you go back to the main screen and try to end it, what you have to do is go to menu and then come here to delete, delete route. And then yes, you want to delete it. So yeah, that's fine. Um, personally, I would use Apple CarPlay, but that there is that option there, um, which is quite good. And then down here, we've got some shortcuts to like getting directions to your home, menu for the sat nav and various things like that. Uh, we click on the clock, doesn't do anything. We've got the average fuel economy in here. So if we start the engine, what this will do is show us the fuel economy. So uh, got 140 miles left in the tank, about half a tank, 55.5 um, MPG, and there's some various bits in here. So we've got the fuel economy here. Let's turn the wipers off. Um, we've got the average fuel economy, uh, where the power is going. So if we rev the engine, no, nope, not going to do anything, but the battery's full. The engine's on, um, and yeah. And then we've got the tire pressures as well. So let's turn the engine off and then put the screen back on here. Pretty good. Um, the Swift is quite economical as well. So we've got Apple CarPlay. Let's click on that. Usual, usual sort of stuff. It is, wi it is wireless, which is really nice. Um, it tends to respond pretty well, which is quite nice. Um, what's weird is on most cars with Apple CarPlay, you'll have a, a badge or logo on, on the, um, the app, the main home screen here to show you to go back to the main infotainment screen. The Swift doesn't have that. Um, there isn't a logo with a, Swift, a Suzuki badge on it. So what you have to do is click on this square button here and that takes you back to the main screen. We've got settings for the whole car. There isn't much stuff in here. So we've got system settings to start with. We've got display settings. So what we have got is display control. We've got the brightness so we can make that brighter and darker. Got day and night mode, that's on auto or day. And then we have got night, which is a bit dimmer. Home screen, AV position, driver side or passenger side. Got, so got volume settings. Got the beeps you can turn on and off, voice guidance on and off. 
voice guidance volume. We've also got phone volume, ringtone volume, voice recognition volume, uh, attenuate AV volume on guidance voice. I guess that means it just dampen the, the sound of the, the guidance voice. We've also got a camera screen and then speed dependent volume control. So when you put the car in reverse, it will turn down the volume of the AV system. You can turn that off if you want to. Got shortcut key settings. So um, I guess that's this star button here. So you can assign it to various things, um, which is quite nice. Uh, switch screen theme, got crystal or basic or layered. So lots of different themes here. So that one's quite friendly. Um, we're gonna go with that one, I think. Uh, we've got security pin setting, off or on, lock keypad while driving, language settings, clock settings. So let's look at languages. Got lots of different European languages in there, which is quite good. Uh, got clock settings here. Uh, it's got the date format, the time format. Let's put it on 12 hours. Time adjustment. Don't think it's gonna be automatic. Oh, it is, auto time zone. And then manual time settings as well. Is that the correct time, 2.13? It is. Let's go back a few pages. We've got uh, reset all the factory settings. That's pretty good. And then unit information. So you can choose different things in here. Got software updates. I, yeah, I'm not sure if the car has over the air updates, but we're not gonna touch that now. Open source software licenses as well. Uh, navigation settings, this is probably gonna be. Yeah, recommendation for the route condition, route options. Let's look at this one. Sort short or main road. Uh, route options here. We've got motorway. So you can basically choose what bits of the, um, what types of roads that the sat is gonna take you on. Of course, this is all the built-in sat -nav, so yeah. We've also got DRG, dynamic route guidance. I guess that will um, change the route based on what the road conditions are, so that's all quite good. Um, auto, auto or manual. Uh, current route and the speed for ETA, local roads recommendation. Um, speed for ETA, so you can actually change the, the speed you're gonna be going and how that affects your ETA, which is quite cool. Uh, block area, show in large guidance point. Show illustration of guidance point, auto zoom, and country borders, lots of different things in there, quite useful. Uh, 3D map, unit of measurement mile. So you can probably choose between kilometers and miles. Got 2D or 3D, day and night display, show travel log, interesting. Uh, conditions of showing travel log, show direction to destination, show POA, point of interest icons, um, and 3D landmarks, 3D buildings, one way road sign. Um, motorways, show congestion free indicator lines, and lots of different options in here for customization, which is quite good. So we've also got the sound settings. Let's have a look in here. We've got fader balance center, equalizer presets, compressed sound source correction. Um, we've also got the phones that are currently connected, so device list. Let's have a look, my phone should be in here. Yeah, my phone and then CarPlay is connected. We've got Bluetooth on or off, Wi-Fi on or off, and Android Auto functions as well. And lastly, we have to start the engine again for this one. I've got the vehicle settings, vehicle alert information, uh, warning information, door open, parking brake. You can basically turn off all the alerts that are gonna annoy you um, if you don't want them at all. Vehicle customization as well. Um, door unlock. Oh yeah, so with the Swift, like other Japanese cars, you have to press the um, key fob twice to get it un to unlock all the doors. You can actually change that uh, which is quite good and you can make it do like a normal car would just press once to unlock it and then this, the car will also beep to tell you've unlocked you've unlocked the vehicle which is quite quite useful so yeah, you can do that that's all the settings for the car and we've also got carplay um if we click on the menu here we can choose between fm am or dab and then av off and there's also ipod bluetooth and usb um and then if we click on dab here we turn the volume down different radio stations, we've got settings for the radio. Let's have a quick look in here. That just takes you to the sound settings as well. So that's pretty simple really. There isn't much to it on the new Swift. Very easy to use, if not a little bit slow at times, um, but for the price of the car, that's pretty understandable. And so I'm pretty impressed with the infotainment system on the new Swift. There isn't much going on with the driver's display, very small screen, about four inches, not many options in there, just very useful um, sort of I don't know, trip computer, bits of information, the speed we're going, um, there's acceleration information and uh, different graphs for that. It's not that interesting on there. And the Swift doesn't have an app either, um, just based on the price of the vehicle, it's not gonna really have one. So that's been a look at the infotainment system on the new 2025 Suzuki Swift. If you like this sort of content, please consider subscribing to the Interface Cars. My name's Alex and I'll see you again next time.